we came here to give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful for another day. You know, let's not take it for granted. We're all breathing. We're able to dance, clap, and sing unto the Lord. So let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. So yesterday I was praying and just asking God, okay, so Lord, I know you just want me to, they've asked me to come and pray and open up the service, but what do you want me to do? And what he said to me was that, let them thank me for the blood that was shed. You know, John 3.16 says, I want to read it so that I don't misquote anything. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So that sacrifice that God did for us, that blood that Jesus Christ shed on that cross for you and I, for us to have everlasting life. He wants us to thank him for that. So Father, we just give you praise. We give you honor, we give you glory. We are so grateful for the blood. We are so grateful for the sacrifice that you made for us. Father, we just thank you for that. We are so grateful, so grateful, so grateful for that. We just ask, oh God, that even as we are here to praise your name, to receive from you, to receive a word from you, we ask, oh God, that you will go ahead of us, oh Lord. We ask, oh God, that you take absolute control of this service, oh God. That, Father, your word and your word alone is what is spoken to your children, oh God. That, Father, even as we praise and worship you, that we do it in spirit and in truth, oh God. That everybody else that is still on their way, that you'll bring them safely in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, once again for that blood that you shed on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're here to praise him. We're here to praise the King of glory. We're here to praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Come on, tell someone beside you, I'm here to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. So we're here to praise Him. Yeah, we say praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise Him. All the earth. So we we'll praise the Lord. Praise His great and holy name. The whole world praise Him from the rising of the sun. Let His praise be heard from the east to the west and the north to the south. Let everything. the rising of the sun let us break the earth from the east to the west and the north to the south let everything that has breath let everything in my soul let everything We're gonna praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the sanctuary. 
praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. All the earth praise Him. Praise His great and holy name. From the rising of the sun, from the rising of the sun, let his praise be heard from the east to the west and the north to the south. So let everything that has breath, let everything in my
open the eyes of the blind. There's no one, no one, not like you, Lord, in all the earth. Oh, oh, say into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. Say there's no one, no one, not like you, Lord, there's none like you. Say that our God is greater. Our God is strong. Lord, you are higher. Our God is Jesus. He's the power. Say, our God, our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher. You're higher than Say, our God is Jesus. He's the power. power. Yeah. Our God. And if our God is with us, then what can stand you say you say? And if our God is and if our God, and if our God then what can stand? What can stand against our God? What can stand against our God? What can stand against our God? Oh, 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 oh. Say our God is greater. Our God is
this morning, in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. Um, this morning, I'll be leading us in the prayer for revival. Um, so when I was told I would be taking the prayer for revival, I was looking up the meaning of revival in the dictionary. <clears throat> and what came up was, um, it means to bring to life, to restore. And the verse that came to mind was John, John 15, 47, in the New Living Translation. And I thought to myself, for God to bring to life what is dead in us, it means something must be dead in us. So we need to reconnect to our source and we need to ask God to connect us back to him. So if I can have John 15, 47 on the screen, it says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine. And you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may, be asked, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. So our first prayer point this morning is for us to remain in God, for us to be reconnected in God. Because his word says, if we remain in him, if we're connected to him, we can ask him for anything. We can ask for revival. We can ask for the government to be changed. So we, we, I just want us to intercede right now. Ask God for us to be reconnected to him, to remain in him, to restore us, to create in us a clean heart. So let's just start to pray, church. In Jesus' name. Robo sani kerebe sali kerebe sali kerebe rebe sani kanaba ni karabo ni karabo ni karabo ni karabo ni karabo ni karabo oh god just align us oh god in your perfect will restore us to us oh god create in us a clean heart oh god connect us back to you oh god we come back to you this morning with our hands lifted up oh god and our heads bowed before you in worship oh god oh lord forgive us for every sin that we have committed oh god first of all oh lord just renew us oh god renew our minds renew our spirit Oh so God, oh Lord, bring to life everything that is dead within us, oh God. Bring to life everything that is dead within us, oh God. Let every dry bone within us start to bring life into our souls, oh God. Ni karabo sali kerebe sali kerebe sali kerebe sali kerebe si robo sani karaba sani karaba sani kerebe sani karabo robo sani karaba sali kerebe sali karabo ni karaba ni karaba ni karaba ni karaba and then. If we move on to Psalm 51 verse 12, it says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. So today we're going to ask God to restore to us the joy of our salvation. The first love that we had in Christ when he gave us, when we came to know him, that you shall restore it back unto us and that we shall truly love him and truly know him and give us the grace to be obedient to his word. Because it's one thing to hear God's word, it's another thing to be obedient to. We can't be hearers of God's word and not be doers also. So this morning let us pray, oh God, give us the grace, oh God, to do that which you would have us go. Oh Lord, we are your seed, oh God. We are the ones who will bring forth revival, oh God. So therefore we decree and declare, O oh God, that everything that is in us that is not of you, O oh God, we ask that you remove, O oh God. We ask that you shall restore to us your joy of salvation, O oh God. We ask for divine joy, O oh God, and divine strength from you and you alone, O oh God. Ni karabo sali karaba sali kerebe. Rebe sali karabo sani karaba sali karabo. O Lord, just take control, O oh God. Take control of everybody here, everybody listening online, O oh God. We ask that you connect them back to you, O oh God. That they will be reconnected and regenerated, O oh God. They will be renewed, O oh God. They will have a fresh anointing, oh God, poured upon them this morning, oh God. Oh Lord, you decree and declare that our prayer is for revival in the United Kingdom, oh God. Our prayer is for there to be a restoration of the old things, oh God. We want us to go back to the way things were back in your days, oh God. We want us to hunger and thirst after righteousness sake, oh God. We want to long after you, oh God. We want to put you first, oh God. We want to seek first the kingdom of God, oh God, and not our selfish desires, oh God. Ni karabo sali kerebe sali karabo robo sani karabasa ni karaba shali karabo sani kerebe sali karabo robo sani kerebe in Ezekiel 37:46. 
He said, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So Father Lord, we pray that breath shall come upon us right now, oh God. For those that are listening online, that breath shall come upon them right now, oh God. For those that are here, oh God, even in their sick beds, oh God, let your breath come upon them right now, oh God. Let them be restored, oh God. Oh Lord, our desires for revival to come back to the United Kingdom, oh God. Turn the hearts of man back to you, oh God. Your word says, if my people who are called by my name should have Humble themselves and pray. Then shall we turn from our wickedness, O oh God. O oh Lord, we come to you this morning and beseech you and plead, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. For there is none like you, O oh God. You are the lo- our only sovereign God, O oh God. You are our King, you are our Maker, O oh God. And there is none like you, Jehovah. <speaking in Hebrew> And I'll end with this. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. 19. Remember ye the, not the former things, neither consider the things of all. Behold, he is doing a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers and desert places. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Please sit down for seven years. everybody and welcome to this week's seven news one of the best things you can do as a new Christian is to stay connected to a community that will support and encourage you in your growing relationship with Jesus Christ with that being said Jesus house would like to invite all those who have given their lives to Christ in the past three months to a new believers forum which will take place on Sunday the 25th of February immediately after each service in the staff lounge and will help you to understand what your decision means going forward each month we will focus on a different topic from who is Jesus Christ to what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It promises to be an amazing time, so please join us as we connect, encourage, and grow in our faith. The church is experiencing very exciting times at the moment as we press into our seventh season with bold expectancy of the new and powerful things that God is doing in our nation, in our church and in our lives. If ever there was a time to press deeper into prayer, then this is definitely it. There are lots of opportunities to come together and pray at Jesus' house, so please try and plug into as many as possible. God himself said that if we seek him, we will find him. So we need to do exactly that. Our time to pray online webinars take place on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. Details on how to connect can be found on the Jesus House website. We also have our Tuesday and Thursday evening prayers from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Jesus House and our Saturday morning prayers from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. and Sunday morning prayers from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. also at Jesus House. In addition, our monthly evening prayer session and vigil takes place on Friday the 23rd of February from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. and then every last Friday of the month. Also, please be reminded that the RCC GFAST is still ongoing till the 1st of March. It runs from 12 midnight to 6 p.m. Alternatively, you can embark on a 21-day liquid fast. The General Data Protection Regulation, otherwise known as GDPR, changes how businesses process and handle personal data in the EU. Take a look at this video, which explains how this affects you. On the 25th of May 2018, the European Parliament's General Data Protection Regulation comes into effect. This new law will strengthen data protection for EU citizens and change how businesses approach information security, data privacy and governance. The legislation is pivotal for businesses operating in Europe 
because GDPR sees the introduction of mandatory security notifications, data breach fines of up to 4% of global turnover, and more freedom for citizens on how their personal data is used. Make sure you have the right procedures in place to detect, report, and investigate a security breach within 72 hours. The GDPR is coming. Are you ready to transform? Church Office is currently looking to recruit for the following roles. An ACCA qualified accountant, a data entry officer, maternity cover for a communications officer, specifically social media, a PA to a senior pastor, a facilities officer, and an admin assistant. If you are interested in any of these roles, then please email hr at jesushouse .org.uk for more information. We are still in need of Connect Group hosts and leaders, so if you would like to volunteer in either of those capacities, please do let us know. Volunteering Month kicked off today in Jesus House and continues until the 11th of March. Now is your chance to step up and make a difference. To register, please visit bit.ly forward slash vol4 2018. That's all for this week's 7 News. Here's a recap of this week's announcements. To rewatch this program, please visit the Jesus House website or our YouTube page. And remember, we are a social church. You can follow and like us on all major social networking sites where our handle is at Jesus House UK. Goodbye and have a blessed week. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's appreciate our seven news team. And I'm going to crave your indulgence. I'm going to ask you to please turn to your left and to your right and just say something nice to the person you're sitting next to this, this afternoon. Go on, say something. Welcome them into God's presence. Tell them it's lovely to see them this afternoon. And mean it. Amen. And in the same vein, can we also appreciate our online congregation, those who are joining us online this afternoon? Can you just wave and welcome them? For those of you joining us online, we are grateful uh, that you've chosen to worship with us this afternoon. Amen. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, I, I was saying in the first service, it, it is a privilege to be used by God. We say that as a people, our primary pursuit is to seek God first, our relationship with God, out of which we discover the reason why God has planted us on the face of the earth. The outworking of that should be that every life is being used by God to affect and touch other people's lives. It's something that we are passionate about, and we encourage everybody to exemplify in their, in their lives. And um, part of the outworking of this is that one of our ministries every year always embarks on a mission to areas in the world, any area in the world where people are disadvantaged or um, underprivileged, just to serve with their gifts. And as we've mentioned over the last few weeks and probably months, our healthcare team will be going on one of such missions, a healthcare mission to Kenya, to one of the remote areas in Kenya, specifically to the Maasai Mara tribe of people. And uh, they're going to be going this Saturday, the 24th of February. They'll be away for eight weeks, eight days, I beg your pardon. Um, they're, they're going to be serving with their skills, you know, offering medical stuff, but at the same time ministering to the people in that region. I gather there are about 18 of them that are going and we just wanted to commit them into God's hands so that this trip will be a su successful one. Um, we want to pray for them. 
How's the go? So I'm going to ask if there's any, any one of the, the 18 members that are going, if you're here. Can I invite you to please come? We want to pray for you, um, the healthcare team. Please appreciate them as they, as they come. Please come forward. Go on, enc encourage them as, as they come forward. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Church, I'm, I'm going to ask us because they're not going by themselves or for themselves. They are representing us. Um, they're, they're, they're going as emissaries of God, emissaries of the church to serve the people in the Maasai Mara region. So can you please stretch out your hands towards them and pray from the bottom of your heart. Just ask God to please go with them. We don't take journey messages for granted at all. So we're saying to God, these are your children, these are your people, going on your behalf. Please go with them. Like Moses says to God in Exodus, if you don't go with us, it's pointless, oh God. And so we're saying, Father, please go with this, your children, oh God. We ask that you grant them journey mercies as they fly to Kenya, as they drive to those remote regions, to the Maasai Mara people, as they go day by day to minister to them. Lord, let your holy presence surround them, be with them, be their strength, be their rock, be their shield. Go on, church, let's pray for them. We don't take any of these things for granted. We're saying that God will strengthen them every day. They're going to be seeing hundreds of patients every day ministering for hours every day that the lord will strengthen them in their inner man that out of their bellies will flow rivers of li living water that they'll minister life both naturally and spiritually to the people of the messiah mara let's ask that god will grant them health there'll be no sickness there'll be no failings oh lord oh lord watch over your children go on church let's just cry out to god concerning them you know, Abraham's servant, when he was going, he said, Lord, make this trip successful. We're saying, Lord, make this trip successful. Lord God Almighty, let your spirit minister through them. We're asking specifically that as they minister to people, to their medical needs, they'll also minister to their spiritual needs. That the result will be that men and women will turn to God. They will glorify God. They'll give their lives to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We bless you, O Lord God Almighty. Be with each one of these, your children, O God. Thank you, O Lord our God. We honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, Father, we bring each one of these children before you, Lord. We ask that the precious blood of Jesus will be a mark upon them, O God. That by your Spirit you will distinguish them on this trip, O God. Lord God Almighty, Without you, this mission trip would be meaningless. So we invoke your holy presence, O God. Sweet Holy Spirit, go ahead of them. Make crooked paths straight before them. Cause this trip to be successful, O God. Lord, they will go safely, they will return safely. In the remote regions, your angels will watch over them. That the, they will not smite their feet against rock, O God. Lord God Almighty, the arrows by day and the plagues by night, they will not come near them, O God because you'll watch over your children. Sweet Holy Spirit, as they speak, O God, speak through them, O God. As they lay hands to minister, Lord, let it be your hands, everlasting Father. And Lord, most importantly, let the hearts of the people they come across, let them be turned towards you, O Lord. We bless you, everlasting Father. Glorify your name in this trip, O God. We bless you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well done, guys. And God, God go with you. God bless you. God go with you. God bless you. And we shall hear good reports when you come back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to continue in our worship of our Lord. Um, this time with our tithes and with our offerings as we honor God. It's a biblical injunction. We come into the presence of God. We honor Him with our substance. We honor Him because we are grateful. 
for what he has done in our lives. We also obey his injunction to give our tithes for the work of the ministry, for the expansion of the kingdom. So please let's prepare our tithes and our offering as we continue to worship God in this manner. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, if you're a visitor, please don't feel compelled to give. We always emphasize that we do this with understanding and as an act of worship to God. So let's please prepare. I will say a prayer and then we'll just rise up as we continue to worship. Let us pray. Father, we are immensely grateful for your goodness and your kindness towards us. Grateful for the privilege that we have in you to worship your God. And Lord, we're also grateful for the provision that you give to us. It is out of this we bring tokens this afternoon to honor you in our offering and in our tithes. May our offering be pleasing and acceptable to you and may it be used for the expansion of your kingdom. Glory be to your name, O God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can I invite us to rise up to our feet as we just worship God in this manner? take that reflection and apply it to this song we're about to sing. Oh, the 
Hallelujah. Father, we declare that your presence, O oh God, is the most important thing to us. Help us to appreciate it. Help us to cherish it. Help us to nourish it, Heavenly Father. Your presence is everything to us, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go on, give your God, your Father, a clap of him. Go on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Today is the first day uh, of four Sundays where the church is going to be manned by by, you, by members of the congregation who have stepped into the gap to allow the normal volunteer workforce to have a break for a month. And so we want to appreciate um, all those who are serving in, in any capacity, from the marshals to the greeters to the security team to the temple keepers to the, the multimedia kids first, the prayer ministry, hospitality, the brook, uh, pages, and I'm sure I've missed out because there are close to 40 other ministries, service management, protocol, uh, ushers, and the list goes on and on and on. Team 412, raised up in Christ. Uh, we just want to appreciate all of the volunteers who have stepped in for the next four Sundays. Will you appreciate them, please? Amen. And, and how, many, how many would say that our new choir has been a blessing? Yeah? Go and ap appreciate them. And, and, and Elijah on keyboards. At, guess how old he is? 11 years old. How many know that if you're, if you're playing in the house of the Lord at 11... Your, your, your future is not just orange, it's, it's, it's bright. A amen? Go on, let's appreciate the entire team. And uh, it was great to see the, the fathering influence of David as he sat there like a real father on, on, the, on the guitar, just encouraging the team. And it was wonderful to see Fumi um, behind the scenes, just encouraging a new tribe of Judah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, since God spoke that word to us about the seventh season, uh, we've, we've had a whole, a significant number of testimonies as to how the word has started to bear fruit in the lives of those who have embraced the word, believed the word, and stood in prayer over the word. And we're actually putting together all these testimonies and we're creating some sort of community where people can go in and share their testimonies, but also hear what God is doing in other people's lives in this seventh season. And I've picked out two of them to read to you. I was going to do more than two, but I think we're constrained by time. So I've picked out two of them to read two of them to you because these, these ones really touched my heart. All of them have, but these ones um, touched my heart. So this was written by um, a member of the church, specifically written to Doc, um, just sharing God's goodness in her life. I'm, I'm going to read it verbatim, so I'm just going to literally read um, the testimony to you. Um, dear Pastor Adeaga, thank you for taking my call today. I had to share this with my pastor. For a long time I've been saying to myself, all these great things that God is doing in my life, I have to let pastor know. So last year I was awarded a Florence Nightingale Leadership Award, the highest achievement in nursing. That's a good point to celebrate God. When... A profession accords someone the highest honor of that profession. That's, that's worth 
that's a good place to say praise God. To know how tough the process was, if you can imagine what happens in Lord Sugar's boardroom. I had to present to a boardroom my patient improvement project. I hope I can sit down and tell you all about this experience one day. I left with a, with a sense of great achievement. They were interviewing 60 candidates over three weeks. I was the first one, and they would only choose 12. As I left the boardroom and, and walked into Victoria Station, I said, I hope they remember me, my story, and what I am trying to do for my patients. What was interesting was that in my application, I had put down my social responsibilities as a temple keeper in Jesus' house. She serves in the temple keeper's ministry, which uh, are the people you see walking around. Sometimes you see them in the loos, in the gents and the ladies, or you see them around, just making sure that this, this place is fit for purpose for you. During the interview, an accomplished gentleman asked me of my role as a temple keeper and acknowledged the good work that Jesus House is doing in this nation. Is this not a big testimony? Isn't that amazing? Isn't God something? She goes for an interview for an award, Ayo. And one of the people interviewing her, she mentions she's a temple keeper in Jesus' house. And the gentleman starts talking about Jesus' house and how he knows the work that the church is doing in the nation. Jesus puts it this way. He said, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Yeah? That, that's, that's, that's what it is. That took me by surprise, and, was so, and I was so humbled that they all know about Jesus' house and the work that we do. The great news is that three weeks later, I was awarded the Florence Nightingale Emerging Leadership Scholarship and awarded 11,000 pounds for my personal development. I have been coached, mentored, sent to Harvard, it has been an awesome experience. This has opened incredible blessings in my life, and I am excited about what's to come. And today, when I received the invitation, like the day she wrote this, from the master of the household for a reception to be given at Buckingham Palace to honor those in frontline nursing in the UK in the presence of royalty, I now understand what it means to be God's elect. Coincidentally, I also finished reading Pastor Agu's book, The Blessings of the Seventh Season, last week as I was flying to and from Belfast from a business trip. A week later, I received an invitation to Buckingham Palace. Please thank Pastor Agu for me. Thank you, Pastor Agu. He may not know personally, but I am touched and encouraged by his messages. I am truly humbled by my experiences. From very humble beginnings to this, it can only be God. This is in line with our message on Sunday, which was truly inspiring. It's all coming together for those who love God and who stay in His presence. I found myself in tears sitting, on my, sitting at my desk and felt God's favor in my life. I shared this information with my kids. You may know, Pastor, I adopted three children from my sister at the age of 29. Not by choice, but through difficult circumstances, I had to be a mother and father. They are all graduates, and my daughter's wedding, which I contact, contacted you about last year, was another testimony of God's presence in my life, when God turns up at a wedding. Last year was a phenomenal year, an extremely busy year for me, and in all of that, I managed to stay on track with the Word and what was going on in my church. As Pastor Agu has prepared us very well for the manifestation of the word, Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19, I can only wait with excitement. While it may feel that I am in the background, I love my church, and you deserve to know what God is doing in our lives. I am very grateful for the leadership in our church. Thank you, my pastors. I hope this will encourage someone. The word of God is real. You know, we are... Um, You know, she served faithfully as a temple keeper in the background. Um, men might not have acknowledged her, but God acknowledged her. Amen. And I want us to celebrate one of our own who has received the highest honor 
in the nursing profession, Alice Denga, as she comes up to the stage. Go and celebrate Alice. Alice Denga. You know, the nature, the nature of testimonies is that we shrink what happened over years into a few minutes. And sometimes it can make us not understand the trials, the tests, the challenges, the difficulties. So Alice's life is a testimony that God will take you through those challenges. He will take you through those difficulties. That the test that you're going through is really a testimony in the making. And these are early days for her yet with what God will do with her. And so, Father, we commit your daughter, Alice, into your hands. She has brought honor to your kingdom. We thank you, Father, for the honor that you have given to her heavenly Father. We commit her into your hands in this her seventh season. These are just early days yet. You will surprise her with what you will do, heavenly Father. Because she has been honored in heaven, men are starting to honor her. Long may she continue to be honored in heaven, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Go on, celebrate Alice. Bless you. Celebrate Alice. Now, I want to share this other, this other testimony. Now, this one is very interesting. I forgot to tell them in this first service. Because when they came to me, you know, fruit of the womb, challenges here and there, you know, because I was involved, I kind of knew God was going to do it, but the quick way God did it caught me unawares. So when they came to me, they came to me on a Sunday the end of a long day, maybe around about six or seven in the evening, something like that at the end of the day. I'd seen so many people, and some of the people I'd seen had been challenging. Some hadn't done what they should. It was just one of those days. And they came to me with this testimony, which I'm going to share to you. By the time they finished the testimony, the awesome presence of God descended into my office. I, I didn't know when I got up and I lay on the floor. Now, you can imagine people come to you, the pastor for counseling, and then they share. When they finish, the pastor doesn't say anything. I just got up and I just lay on the floor. And I just started thanking God. I think they thought, God did it for us. He's lying on the floor. Next thing I looked up, husband and wife were on the floor as well. <laughs> so all of us were on the floor. That's why I stayed, as I was just, because I was awed by, just in awe of God. As a family, we'd been going through a series of challenges, and towards the end of 2017, we decided to see Pastor Agu for counsel and prayers. We initially met him on Sunday, and he asked us to go, Simeon, I know I said no to the water, but yes now, I kind of changed my mind. We initially met him on Sunday, and he asked us to go think about what we desire from God, fast and pray for three days, then come back to him during the week. It's not a formula. While they were speaking to me, God was just giving me instructions for them. When we met him during the week, he prayed for us and told us to give a financial gift to people in need with a criteria that the gift should make a difference to the people we give it to. Now, while speaking to me, they were, they came, part of why they came were financial challenges and then work challenges and not enough money, and, and they were also believing God for the fruit of the womb. But while they were speaking to me, God said, tell them to go and fast and pray for three days and come back with what they really desire deep in their hearts. And then God said, tell them they should go and take a significant sum of money and go and find those who are less privileged than them. They felt they had issues. But God said to me, they should find others who have worse circumstances, who are in worse circumstances, and sow the money into their lives. How many know that? That can, that can only be God, or it doesn't make sense. Because the people came to tell you their challenges. But you can't follow God with your mind. You follow God by the Spirit. 
And they could have gone away and been disobedient and said, you know, we went to him to say we have, we have issues. He says we should go and take the little we have and sow it into the lives of those who are more challenged than us. It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's akin to the, the prophet going to the widow and the widow says, I don't have any food for you. I have a little for myself and my son to eat. And the prophet says, use what you have. Make it into a meal. Give me first and then. And it's the kind of thing that today the tabloids would say, pastor manipulates congregation member. We emptied our long-term savings and gave to three families in dire need. Also in November, Pastor Agu, through the Holy Spirit, encouraged the church to sow a seed towards the seventh season, a sacrificial offering. At the time, we were overseas for three weeks where I was meeting my clients. My wife mentioned that we should give the maximum 2,000 pounds. Since we didn't have that in available savings, we sold some of our investments in shares to make the seed available. Pastor blessed this and we offered it to God. Now, how many know this is, uh, this is what they slag people off for? I mean, the, the people say we were not there, we were abroad. But we watched online. We saw that a sacrificial offering was being received. The wife told him we need to sow into that offering and we saw the maximum amount that was asked for. That was 2,000 pounds there. Somebody say, thank God for good wives. Go and say it again. Then say, thank God for husbands that listen to good wives. Because how many know the husband could have said, with what we are going through, is anything wrong with you? Don't you understand our finances? But once the wife said, this is what I feel the husband obeyed, they didn't have the money, they sold some shares, to sow into the kingdom of God. Since we took these actions, this is our testimony. We were believing God for the fruit of the womb and told Pastor Agu we were looking at trying for children in December 2017. They told me in November, first week in November, if I remember rightly. To God's glory, my wife conceived in the second week of November without complications and contrary to the negative opinions of men. Please, if you're celebrating God, celebrate God. A year prior to this, she had had an open my myomectomy procedure to take out really huge fi fibroids. Thank God the conception happened without any complications and the pregnancy has been without stress and the usual morning sickness. Interestingly, during the last festival of life rest, she felt God say after Pastor Adeboye had ministered that he was giving us rest where children were concerned. May that be someone's testimony who is listening to me. God transformed my career. I moved from being an also-ran to being recognized as a global subject matter expert, business talent, and recognized as the most resilient member of the business area. Through God's favor, I was able to win two FTSE five clients for my business area. The area of specialty is not, even, is not one that even my partner or directors understood. But through the wisdom of God, I practically developed it and generated half a million pound of opportunities within three months. And this is still gr growing. Every day I'm experiencing what it means to be helped by God solve challenges with solutions that are invented on the spot and God's wisdom being brought into the context of client challenges. In addition, God promoted my wife miraculously to a new job in April just before we saw Pastor Agu, which by human qualifications she could not have got. The recruiter said this typically never happens. And you're going to hear a lot of that, that we don't normally do this. This typically never happens. We've never done this before. That's the blessing of the seventh season. The role is quite complex, and in the earlier days, colleagues did say they didn't think she was smart enough to do the job, and she was usually being discredited further, making her work difficult. 
In his message, just after we saw Pastor Agu, God miraculously granted her favor with senior leaders and raised helpers who have been putting her forward for strategic projects with increased visibility. Even detractors had no choice but to work with her and support her, and God has demonstrated his wisdom through her. Those, who, those detractors will eventually say, this is the hand of God, and there's nothing we can do about it. In addition, since the beginning of the seventh season, God has granted us significant favor with the global senior leadership team of her organization such that she is now relied upon to design strategies for dealing with inefficient processes, standardizing financial discipline, and even represents the director of finance at leadership retreats. God has indeed prepared a table for us. About three years ago, my wife was diagnosed with tuberculosis in the neck and was treated for it. In October, stroke November 2017, she started having similar symptoms. We held on to God's promise of divine health, and she kept confessing God's word on healing. She kept praying and refused to acknowledge that this was God's plan. In November, she went to see a TB specialist who did a series of tests. To God's glory, she was given a clean bill of health. Amen? Now, it's interesting, just, just an aside, it's interesting that, that they came to see me in November. A lot of things started happening once they did what God asked them to do. But isn't it interesting that around about that same November, the, the enemy comes with this attack that this symptom, these symptoms you're seeing are the TB that you had before. I want to say to someone that an indication of what is ahead is usually the measure of the attack that the enemy brings against you where you are. The more intense the attack, I guarantee you, that's probably a sign that the enemy has seen that there is something awesome on the horizon and he's trying to prevent it from coming to pass. That's why I know for a fact that by God's grace, there will be no abortions of that dream. There'll be no stillbirths of what you're carrying. By God's grace, what you're praying to birth will be birthed. Amen? And then he ends on this note. God miraculously and without stress blessed me to get my wife's dream car for her towards the end of last year. May that be someone's story. That your, your husband, if you're married, will just go and get the dream car for you. And if you're not married, then Jesus will be your husband and get the dream car for you. Go and celebrate God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I am certain that on the back of the word that God gave about this being our seventh season and corroborated it with the word in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 18 and 19, about doing a new thing, about a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am very certain that by the grace of God, we will have testimonies that will confirm the word of God. I receive that word into my life. I encourage you to receive it into your life. I receive it for my family. I encourage you to receive it for your family. I receive it for my church, Jesus House. I encourage you to receive it for your church. I receive it for the body of Christ the church in the United Kingdom. Please receive it for the church. And I receive it for the nation. So I know that God, because he has made it clear, has taken me, my family, my church, Jesus House, the redeemed Christian church of God, the church of God in this nation, and this nation into our seventh season. I know that God has spoken very clearly. He has spoken very clearly. It's unequivocal. I have heard it clearly that God has said, I will do a new thing. I know that I am expectant that there will be new things in my life. You be expectant. That there will be new things in your family. That there will be new things in your church. That there will be new things in this nation. 
And because God has made clear that those new things would be like a way in the wilderness, please be expectant that if you're in any wilderness situation, and what is a wilderness situation? It's one where there doesn't seem to be a way out. It's one where all the things that you could try and do, you have done. It's one where you have exhausted all the possibilities. But God says, I will make a way in the wilderness. And so I know that God will make a way in the wilderness for you, for your family, for this church, Jesus' house, for the church in this land, and he will make a way in the wilderness for the nation. He says, I will make rivers in the desert. That tells me that there are circumstances that are similar to the desert conditions. There's no fruitfulness. Uh, there's no yield for the effort. Uh, it's dry. Uh, it's barren. God tells me by the word that he has given us that he will make rivers in those situations. He will turn those situations around. And so I speak into your life as I speak into the, the, in, into the life of this church, as I speak into the life of the nation to declare that God will make rivers in the deserts that exist in any of those areas. Can someone say amen? amen? And I know that for God to do that in the time that he has allotted, there has to be an acceleration. I also know that when there is an acceleration, the normal rules, the normal laws, the normal protocol, the normal traditions, the normal way of doing things might have to be suspended because God has to bring something to pass. And as I sat on the plane, as I journeyed um, from Lagos yesterday, I felt the Lord lay scriptures on my heart, which I read as part of my, my Bible study. I've been reading the book of Genesis since the beginning of the year, and it's almost like I've never read the book of Genesis before, as I've found it so exciting as God has unveiled his word. I'm sure you know the, the way God works with his word is that like an onion, you never fully know the, the entirety of the word. Every time you go back, he peels off a layer to reveal deeper dimensions of the word to you. And so I want to share with you what I feel God is saying that will confirm every word that he has spoken to us as a people. If you turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis, the 48th chapter, I'm reading the New Living Translation, Doc's, version, Doc's favorite version of the Bible. Genesis 48 in the New Living Translation. If we skip to verse 8, just so we're, we're cognizant of time. Then Jacob looked over at the boys. Are these your sons, he asked. Yes, Joseph told him, these are the sons God has given me here in Egypt. And Jacob said, bring them closer to me so I can bless them. Jacob was half blind because of his age and could hardly see. So Joseph brought the boys close to him and Jacob kissed and embraced them. Then Jacob said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again, but now God has let me see your children too. Joseph moved the boys who were at their grandfather's knees and he bowed with his face to the ground. Then he positioned the boys in front of Jacob. With his right hand, he directed Ephraim towards Jacob's left hand, and with his left hand, he put Manasseh at Jacob's right hand. But Jacob crossed his arms as he reached out to lay his hands on the boy's head. He put his right hand on the head of Ephraim, though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, may he bless these boys. May they preserve my name and the names of Abraham and Isaac, and may their descendants multiply greatly throughout the earth. But Joseph was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. On his head. But his father refused. I know my son, I know, he replied. Manasseh will, be, will also become a great people, but his younger bro brother will become even greater. 
and his descendants shall become a multitude of nation, nations. So Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. In this way, Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. I feel very strongly that the level of grace, mercy, and kindness that God is showing us as a people is going to totally tear up the protocol of man. Because in any circumstance, grace will usually completely rip apart the protocol of man. There are four characters in that story that we read. The first one is Jacob or Israel as his name was changed when he had that encounter with God as he wrestled with him. He's the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. He was born from his mother, Rebekah, with his brother Esau. His story is compelling reading. Someone who was born with a natural proclivity to scheming, a natural proclivity to deceit. His name spoke it all, the supplanter. And we have many examples of that character trait playing out itself. From the time when he conned his brother into selling his birthright, some might say. Others might say it was just a straightforward transaction. His brother had a right to refuse. Whatever side you're on, his brother comes in famished and he has cooked a nice pot of pottage and he basically sells the pottage to his brother and receives from his brother his brother's birthright. That action by the brother in selling his birthright plays itself out when the father is about to bless them. He was his mother's favorite child. His brother was his father's favorite child. The mother gets him into a conspiracy. Together they con the father. The blessing that should have gone on his brother Esau, the father pronounces on him. But then, if you don't repent, life has a way of catching up with you. Because when you think that you have deceived God, God will create a match for you here on earth. And so he runs away from his brother's anger and ends up in the home of his uncle Laban. Now he was scheming. Laban was at another level. Laban cons him into working for him in return for his daughter, Rachel, who he saw and loved. On the wedding night, after he has served seven years for Rachel, on the wedding night, and in those days, and this is how you know what a wedding really is, a wedding is really a consummation of a sexual relationship. That, incidentally, is why you cannot be jumping around sleeping with everybody that you see, because every time you sleep with somebody, you're married to the person. That's why a lot of us cannot get married, because we're already married to so many people. And that's why a lot of us, when we get married, we don't have a soul to give to the marriage, because we have left our souls in so many different places. 
That's why a lot of guys can't worship God because you worship God with your soul, but your soul is with Philomena, is with Agnes, is with Ada, is with, is, with, uh, is with Aisha. And so when you come to God, you don't really have a soul to give God because your soul, every time you, you consummate a marriage, that means you have a sexual relationship. When you tear, break up from that marriage, you tear away from that marriage. Now, how many know if I keep tearing away from things, I keep leaving parts of me all over the place? That's why when we arrive at a the place, there really isn't much to give because parts of us are all over the place. We're, but that's a story for another day. Anyway, as I was, as I was saying, so, so he, 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 on the wedding night, Laban brings in Leah, covers her up, and he thinks he's Rachel. He sleeps with Leah. Once he sleeps with Leah, he's married. It's too late. Now, don't ask me how he didn't know it was Rachel. I just I tried to figure that out, but he slept with Leah. Let's just say that. And so he wakes up and finds out in the morning that it is Leah, not Rachel. Lehman says, it's too late. You're married to her. But do you really love Rachel? He says, yes. He says, give me another seven years of your life. How many know that Jacob had met his match? So he gives another seven years of his life, 14 years. And then he eventually marries Rachel. And then he... You read the story, you see how God gave him divine wisdom to increase his wealth uh, by giving him strategies. And may God, in this seventh season, drop strategies in your mind. May, may creative ideas come into your mind from heaven. May heaven's wisdom be downloaded into you to deal with complex challenges and problems that will make others turn to you because they know that wisdom could have come from no one but from God. Cut a long story short, he eventually runs away from Laban, eventually released. Uh, he has an encounter with his brother Esau, fantastic story to read. Has an encounter with God where, where, where he, where he, where he f finds God when he's left alone, eventually settles in Canaan. A famine hits the whole world, and Joseph has been chosen by God as a, to preserve the posterity of the people by being sold by his own brothers into Egypt. And Joseph is now prime minister. Joseph sends for his family from Egypt and settles them in a place called Goshen. And they live in Goshen for many years. And by this time, Jacob, Israel, has come towards the end of his life. He's about to pronounce a blessing on his sons. But before he does that, he asks for Joseph to bring his own sons for him to bless. Israel, Jacob, in that story, pronouncing the blessing is a type of our Father in heaven pronouncing a blessing on you and I. The second person in the story is Joseph. Now again, his story makes compelling reading. The eleventh child of his father. The child, one of the children of his father's favorite wife, Rachel. Her first child. You see him introduced to us as a 17-year-old boy who was obviously destined for greatness. You read the story as out of envy because his father was very open about the fact that this was a special child. His brothers eventually sell him into slavery. You read the story of how when he's sold into slavery, God is with him. He's given to the captain of the king's guard, Pharaoh's guard, but everything he touches prospers. The captain of the guard trusts him so much, Potiphar that he hands everything over to him. You follow as he is falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, who is attracted to him in a physical sense. Of course, she's been driven by, by spirits that want to destroy his destiny. You read the story as to how he's thrown into jail. But then the gifts that God have give, has given him make room for him in jail. And may your gifts make room for you in this season. And from that, you read the story of how he's eventually brought before Pharaoh, and he interprets Pharaoh's dream and gives Pharaoh a solution to the problem that he interprets in the dream. And then the story ends with him becoming prime minister of Egypt, the number two person in Egypt. And as a result of that, he invites his father, his brothers, their sons, their daughters, to come and settle in Egypt. Seventy of them 
come with, J with Jacob when they come to Egypt. As a reward for what he does in Egypt, Pharaoh gives him a wife, a lady called Asina. She's the daughter of Potiphera, who is a priest, not a Jew, but a Gentile. And from Asina, Joseph has two sons, one called Manasseh, the firstborn, and another one called Ephraim. Manasseh, mean, meaning to forget, and Ephraim, meaning fruitful. And the names speak for themselves as you follow the story. And then Joseph does something that, rather, Jacob does something that has never been done before. When he meets these two boys, in verse 5, he removes them from a Gentile lineage, from being outside the covenant, and consequently outside the blessings. And he puts them within the covenant and in the blessings. In verse 5 of Genesis 48, he says, Now I am claiming as my own sons these two boys of yours, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born here in the land of Egypt before I arrived. They will be my sons just as Reuben and Simeon are. Joseph, as most of us know, was a type of Christ. And there are many examples where you can find similarities between himself and Christ. The one that's most obvious is how he was sent ahead to preserve a posterity for his brothers and his sisters. In much the same way that Jesus came to die to, give, to preserve a posterity for you and I. As a result of his sacrifice, his children were brought into a covenant that they would otherwise not have been a part of. In much the same way that as a result of the sacrifice of God, of Christ, you and I have been brought into a covenant to receive blessings that we don't deserve simply because of the sacrifice of Christ. Paul puts it like that in Romans 11 verse 17 when he talks about us Gentiles being grafted in and as a result of that because we are grafted in, we can receive Abraham's blessings. The boys did not have to earn the blessing. They simply received it because they were Joseph's sons. In much the same way that you and I don't have to earn the blessing. God didn't consult you before he declared it was your seventh season. He didn't consult you before he declared he will do a new thing. He didn't consult you before he says, I will make a way in the wilderness. He didn't consult you before he says, rivers will flow in your desert. He did it simply because of Christ. And in Christ, we receive those blessings. Can someone say amen? Let's hear Pastor Baju read those scriptures to us again and listen very carefully. Then Jacob looked over at the two boys. Are these your sons? He asked. Yes, Joseph told him. These are the sons God has given me here in Egypt. And Jacob said, bring them closer to me so I can bless them. Jacob was half blind because of his age and could hardly see. So Joseph brought the boys close to him, and Jacob kissed them and embraced them. Then Jacob said to Joseph, I never thought I would see your face again, but now God has let me see your children too. Joseph moved the boys who were at their grandfather's knees, and he bowed with his face to the ground. Then he positioned the boys in front of Jacob, with his right hand, he directed Ephraim towards Jacob's left hand. And with his left hand, he put Manasseh at Jacob's right. But Jacob crossed his arms as he reached out to lay his hands on the boy's heads. He put his right hand on the head of Ephraim. Though he was the younger boy, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, though he was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my grandfather Abraham and my father Isaac walked, 
the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this very day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm. May he bless these boys. May they preserve my name and the names of Abraham and Isaac. And may their descendants multiply greatly throughout the earth. But Joseph was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son, I know, he replied. Manasseh will also become a great people, but his younger brother will become even greater, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So Jacob blessed the boys that day with this blessing. The people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. In this way, Jacob put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. I sense very strongly that God is about to do something that will accelerate things in your life in your family, in this church, and in this nation. Because you see, the, the times are drawing to an end of the ages. And there's still a lot that God has to do. So there has to be an acceleration. And I want to show you what I sense God is doing in our lives. Let me just depict something to you that I want you to remember no matter what challenges you're going through, I hear God say quite clearly that he is rewriting the protocol. He is changing things to bring to pass his own plans and purposes. In the scriptures that Bajo read, Joseph brings his two sons. He brings Manasseh, his first son, and Ephraim, his second son. Joseph understands the protocol. He knows how things are done. He knows that there's a certain way it is done traditionally. It's the proper way to do things. He also knows that to do it any other way would be against the tradition, against the law of the land, and would be perceived by some to be unfair. He's also aware that his father, his eyes are dim, to use the translation in the New King James Version. The New Living Translation says he's half blind. He can't see properly. And so to help his father discharge the blessing, he prepares the boys. He knows that the tradition is that his father's right hand will rest on the first son, Manasseh. And the father's left hand would rest on the second son, Ephraim. It was graphic because in those days, the right hand was conveying a stronger, more significant blessing than the left hand. And so to help his father, because his father's eyes are dim and the father couldn't recognize the boys, he positions the boys in the right way. Joseph places his first son on his left hand and push, brings him forward to the father with his left hand, knowing that it will make it easier for the father to reach out and bless with his right hand. And he positions his second son, Ephraim, on his left side, guiding him forward with his left hand, knowing that it will be easier for the father to reach out and bless with his left hand. But as the father reaches out to bless both boys, following the tradition following the protocol, following the procedure, doing what is expected. Something strange happens. The father starts to cross his hands so that his left hand now rests on Manasseh and his right hand now rests on Ephraim. But before he can start to pronounce the blessing, Joseph, realizing that that's wrong, that's not proper, it's not the way it's done, it's not traditional, the, the older should be getting the right hand blessing, speaks up. 
No father, no father. But he is the first one. As he says that, the father says these words. I know my son. I know. What is the father saying? The father is saying, yes, I know. He's the first son and he should get the right hand of blessing. But I've changed the rules. I've changed the rules for my own plans and purposes. What is the father saying? As Joseph says, no, my father, Joseph is saying, no, it's not done like that. It hasn't been done like that in the past. That's not the proper procedure. That's not the right protocol. He's too young for that. He doesn't have the experience for it. It's not the way to go. You are tearing up the rules. You are breaking the law. People are going to say you're unfair. Father, that's not the way to release that blessing. But then the wise old father says, I know, my son, I know. What is he saying? He's saying, yes, those are the rules. Yes, that's the protocol. Yes, that's the procedure. Yes, he is young. Yes, she is not qualified. Yes, she just gave her life. Yes, she hasn't been at all the meetings. Yes, she hasn't done all that the law says she should do. But for my own plans and purposes, I have decided that this is the way it should be. What is he saying? He's echoing what the Bible says. Proverbs 19 verse 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is God's purpose that stands. And he says, for my purpose, I have chosen to cross my hands, that the right hand might rest on Ephraim and the left hand on Manasseh. What is he saying? He's saying what the Bible says in Exodus 33 verse 19. I choose to have, have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy. I choose to show compassion on whom I choose to show compassion. What is he saying? He's saying this is the seventh season. I called it the seventh season. I will do what I want to do in the seventh season. What is he saying, people in Jesus' house? He's saying that he has chosen to bless you. There is nothing anybody can do about it. What is he saying? He's saying, I have chosen to accelerate it. In accelerating it, I might defy the normal protocol, but I have chosen to do it. What is he saying? He's saying, I have chosen to lift you up, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. What is he saying? He's saying, it's not by your works. It is because I have chosen. What is he saying? He's saying, your works just confirm. I have already decided that I am going to do it. What is he saying? He's saying, nothing can stop the new thing from coming to pass. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. What is he saying? He's saying, all you have to do is follow the leading of the Spirit and come. I have chosen to bless you. Can someone say amen? Yes. Thank you, guys. And then he ends on this note. And that note really struck me. He says, by you Israel will bless, saying, may God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. What God is shaping up to do in your life, in your family, as long as you line up with his plans and purposes, in this church, in this nation, is such that it will become a byword to describe God's grace and God's mercy. By the time God finishes with you, like some of the testimonies you have heard, you will not even be able to explain how it came about. Your refrain will constantly be, I give God the glory and only by the grace of God. He says, the nation of Israel will come to define God's prospering a person, God's blessing of a person by Ephraim and Manasseh. He says, the nation will say, you are blessed like Ephraim and Manasseh. That means that God has done something that defines himself. 
So that when someone wants to understand grace, someone will tell them your story. When someone wants to understand God's kindness, someone will tell them your story. When someone is confused about mercy, someone will tell them your story. Because by the time God finishes with you, your family, this church, the church in this land and this nation, it will become a byword for the grace of God. I came to tell someone that God has singled you out, not because you deserve it, but simply because He has chosen to single you out. It is the grace of God that God could choose to use you and I. You know and I know that if we sat on a committee to choose someone as an example, we would disqualify ourselves. But God is saying, you that are disqualified, I have chosen to qualify you. You that have been cast out, I have chosen to bring you in. You that have been cast down, I have chosen to lift you up. You that have been forgotten, and don't forget, don't, don't forget that Manasseh, the name means I, I was forgotten. You that have been forgotten have become Ephraim that has been fruitful. God is sending a message to someone to say that the same way that Ephraim was named fruitfulness is the same way that the desert in your life shall blossom again, shall bloom again. The place that people said was cursed, God has declared is blessed. The nation that people have written off, God says, I have not written off this nation of the United Kingdom. I shall use it once again to show myself mighty. The same way that it exported missionaries to the far-flung parts of the world is the same way that from this island, the gospel will be exported once more to the far-flung parts of the world. I came to tell someone that what you did that you thought has written you off, God has washed it away by the blood and written you in. The same way that those boys did nothing. The only thing that they had was that they were Joseph's son. One day, they were just summoned by their father and taken to their grandfather. It's the same way that you haven't done anything to deserve it. One day, you will, have to, you will testify you were summoned by your father and you were blessed by your father. I declare that that summons is coming to someone's life. That summons is coming to this church. That summons is coming to this nation. Can someone give God a clap offering? I know, my son, I know. It's done that way. But he says, I choose to do it this way. And when he's challenged that it's not proper, it's not fair, it doesn't seem right, she doesn't qualify, she doesn't deserve it, he doesn't deserve it. Look at what they've done in the past. He says, I know, I know. Give God a clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the reason he does it is not to titillate our senses. No, 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 no. Please get it. Says many plans in a man's heart, the wise king says, but God's purpose stands. He does it for purpose. He blessed Ephraim to fulfill purpose. He blesses us for purpose, his purpose. My prayer is that your life will align with his purpose. That's all you have to do. Just align with his purpose. It's like a river that is flowing. All you have to do to be carried along is to get into the river. May God take us into the river of his purpose. Can someone say amen? amen. Why don't you talk to God about your life? Ask for grace to align with his purpose. And thank him for acceleration. Thank him that in this season he's crossing his hands concerning you. Thank him that concerning you, he says, I know, I know. If you listen to that phrase, it's the phrase of a, a man who's thinking of things in his mind that the others don't know. It's not the way it's done. I know, I know, I know. I have a plan for her. I have a purpose for her. She will fulfill the purpose. He will fulfill the purpose. Go on, just talk to God and say, God, just help me. Give me the grace to do what you would have me do. Only in you Take all the glory Jesus Take all the glory Jesus We glory 
Only in you, only in you. It's all about you. When we glory, we glory in you. Give all the glory, God. Take all the glory. We glory only in you. Take all the glory. We glory only in you. Oh, take all the glory, Jesus. Please take all the glory, Jesus. We glory only in you. We glory in you. It's all. When we glory, we glory in you. Father, we just want to thank you and bless you for your plans and purposes. Lord, I present everyone under the sound of my voice to you. As many hearts, O oh God, that are willing to submit their plans, to align themselves with your plans and your purposes. You've said, Heavenly Father, that we will become a byword for your grace and your mercy. Uncommon mercy will be shown to us. We thank you for that, Heavenly Father. May each person here be a recipient of that uncommon mercy. May each family here have a story to tell. May this church have testimonies that will abound in this seventh season. And may this nation, Father, have a story to tell about this season we ask oh god in the name of your son jesus christ we know that as we have asked you have heard we know that you have answered for you've assured us that you will show us great and mighty things when we call upon you we give you all the praise and all the glory in jesus name and we all say amen. you know amen is a lockdown word we all say we all say, Amen. give God a clap offering, God. It was because the boys came that they received the blessing of the Father. The start of that coming is always that you've given your life to Christ. Those of you listening online, you have to have a personal relationship with God. If not, all this is just amateur theater stuff. If you haven't given your life to Christ. I'm not talking about being a me member of a church. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with God. And so just to allow might be one or two people in here or online to just do that, to come. If we can all bow our heads. And if there's anyone in here or anyone online who doesn't have a personal relationship with him, I'd love to pray for you so you can come and receive that blessing. If you would slip your hand up if you're in here. And if you're online, if you would follow the instructions on the screen. Anybody saying, please pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to accept him as Lord and Savior. Is there anybody saying, please pray for me? Anybody in here? If you're online, please follow those instructions. And God bless you as you receive Christ into your life. In Jesus' name. And together we say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give God another clap offering. Go on.